Welcome back to the third installment of our electrical series and I am back on our roof deck and while I'm up here I'm going to be installing our Starlink. I'm also going to do a little bit of tidying up and then going over every single part of our electrical install so stay tuned till the end. I just wanted to show the trio flat mount that we have. It attaches via magnets, so that's super cool. We got these like 3M metal discs, which were part of the Trio Flat Mount kit. So we're gonna kind of arrange this and glue those to the roof. Basically the kit that we got from Trio Flat Mount is a 12 volt Starlink conversion kit. And ideally this is gonna let us run Starlink with less power draw. This is gonna be really nice for life on the road and living off grid. Thank you Trio Mount for partnering with us and definitely give them a check out if you're interested. And just like that, we are going to have internet wherever we roam. For my last little bit of sunset tonight before we continue the video tomorrow, I'm going to try to add some of these H channels from Orion Van Gear. So this is just a little bit extra on some of the areas where they're not quite flush. And I think this is gonna be it. We got our two H channels in here. They look really, really solid. Now we don't have like a, any rays here, uh, which is good. Now I'm gonna tidy up, circle back, manana. Our solar charge controller. Let's finally come in. If you're following along with our build series, you'll know that I ordered the wrong solar charge controller from Battleborn Batteries. Totally my fault. I was just looking at the numbers wrong, and when I was going to install it, I noticed that it only supported 700 watts of solar. We have 825, so we needed a beefier system. So we exchanged it for the 15060 which goes just beyond 825 watts, so exactly what we need. And it's kind of crazy. That small bump from 700 watts to 825 plus a little bit is like almost like double the size of the MPPT charge controller. It's just crazy. It's so much bigger, so much heavier. Let's get it installed. This beefy solar charge controller needs to be 10 centimeters away, kind of just like our inverter. So I think I was gonna put it over here. It's gotta go over here now. So we're just embracing the pivot and trying to make sure we have enough room. All right, I have finished wiring the solar charge controller. Woohoo! The last main electrical component of our Battleborn and Victron system. So let's turn it on. Let's see how well it works. Let's see how much solar actually comes in today. We've got a pretty sunny day here in Florida. So uh, let's see how it works. We're going to do just a initial turn on, trial run, and then I have a lot of cleanup to do, as you can see. The wire's just chilling. This is our Starlink wire. Everything's for still work in progress here for our electrical wall. I'm gonna wrap that up before we do the final overview coming just next, so stay tuned. Let's see how it works. We're rolling, folks. We got 256 watts of solar coming in right now. Got some clouds. Pretty sunny day, though. Pretty happy with that. Let's see. I think we are good. We have 100% state of charge right now, so we're not getting that much power from our solar panels, but it's working. It has been a couple weeks, and I am proud to show you guys our entire electrical system. But first, let's go back up to the roof so I can show you guys the final product. Up here on our Orion roof deck, we have 825 watts of walkable solar. Also up here we have our air conditioning unit that you guys saw us install earlier and the Starlink. Since installing the Starlink, we had Hurricane Milton come through with category two hurricane winds and everything up here stayed perfectly fine. So that's a good sign for the future. These solar panels are mainly going to be used to top up our batteries when we're on the road, or if we're boondocking, say in a national forest or some or BLM land, we can use these to stay topped up and not have to drive the van to recharge the batteries. So I'm really excited to see like how it behaves for us living on the road. I'm happy to say the solar charge controller has been doing a fantastic job, but now it's time to go through the entire electrical system that we have on board here in our tiny home. Now all of the components are done, finished, installed, However, I do not have all of the wiring done for the entire van. So like our 120 volt uh, system, which is connected right here. We have our uh, uh, fuse panel. This is not connected yet. That's gonna be coming later in future videos, but I do have this in a pretty much complete wall for us because it's just gonna be more wires leaving. The foundation of our electrical system are these 810 amp hours from Battleborn. 
These are lithium batteries, the Game Changer 3 heated batteries. So we'll be able to turn these on kind of if the van was really, really cold, we could run the heater before turning on the batteries and uh, make sure they uh, perform perfectly well in that kind of environment. It's only three batteries, which is pretty crazy. They're 270 amp hours each. They're about, I think, 80 pounds each or 60 pounds each. So they're pretty light compared to lead acid which is really cool. We have Victron backed components running the whole system. So we have a multi plus 3000 watt inverter. We have a uh, MPVT solar charge controller. So this is a 60 amp. So this will work for 825 watts. We have our wake speed. Now this is the alternator regulator. So we have this harness going all the way to the front of our van where we have our dedicated alternator from Nations. This will charge our system at almost 300 amps. So if you think about it, if we have an 810 amp hour system charging at just shy of 300 amps, that's less than three hours for zero to full charge, which is pretty crazy. And then over here, we have a couple more Victron components. We have our Touch 50. So this is kind of our control panel for the system. So this will kind of detail where everything is right now. We have our batteries are at 100% charge. We're using a little bit of power because we're running some lights right now. We have our solar input right now at zero watts because we're at full charge basically. And everything is looking pretty good. Behind the batteries, we have our Lynx distributor and our smart shunt. So the shunt is basically keeping track of our seat of charge and our battery temperature and kind of making sure the batteries are charging properly and knowing what state they are. Lynx distributor is kind of where all of our fuse DC loads kind of come from. So they have going to our inverter, going to our DC air conditioner and so on and so forth. Right here, this is our Starlink 12 volt to 25 volt converter. I believe that's what this is. So this is what allows our Starlink to run off of DC instead of AC, which is pretty cool. We actually haven't turned this on yet because we don't want to start paying for the Starlink service until we need it. But I'm really excited to check that out. Here is our controller for our fan our DC fuse block, and then we have our Servo GX, which is our brains of the operation. This is what kind of makes sure everything is talking to each other and makes sure everything is working really well. One of the big considerations here, outside of making sure we had enough battery power, is making sure we had enough charge. And so with the Nation's Alternator and our 825 watts of solar, we are gonna be set, folks. That's the plan, at least we'll see, because we have an induction cooked off, uh, we're putting an oven in the van. We work from the van, so it's a lot of power draw. And so we'll see if it all works. The other thing that we planned is kind of location in the van. So we kind of put this in a different area. These are kind of all neatly arranged. So that way, if we ever have to change or debug a system later on in the van build, we can do that. We have our batteries kind of like off centered towards the driver's side because we have our fridge coming in on the passenger side, which would be heavy. So it's all the weight game of balancing but this wall is gonna be the wall of our bed, and then the other side is gonna be the wall of the hallway. So that's basically our electrical system. With this inverter, we'll be able to run any appliance that we kinda of want in the van. With our battery bank, we're gonna be able to be off-grid as much as possible, and all of the other components kind of make that happen safely with the right wire size, the right fuse size, and it's been really a joy putting this together. Do you want to say one more thank you to Battleborn Energy for being our main sponsor on our electrical build out. The wake speed and the game changer batteries are going to be absolutely game changing for our life on the road. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below because this is really just an overview. And uh, each one of these components, obviously there's a lot to talk about, but I would love to answer any of your questions or if you have any questions about why we did a certain thing a certain way or why we decided to not do something else, definitely let us know. As of now, I am so happy with this, but we are not living in the van yet and I just can't wait to test that out. With that being said, we're gonna be doing a one year later video after living in the van for a year, so make sure you're subscribed to see that. We'll dive deep into how this worked for us after lots of hard use. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.